Hello and welcome to the Jock and Journo podcast. Oh boy, am I looking forward to this one. It is a special grand final edition. And as always, we have the champ, the six-time All-Australian, five-time best and fairest winner. Uh, they call him the grandpa, but he just keeps getting it done. In big moments, it's Scotty Penderbury. How are you, mate? Very well, mate. Thanks for uh, the intro. And yeah, looking forward to the week. It's um, one that's really exciting and um, yeah, going to take it all in. Last played the big dance in 2018. Got the job done, of course, in 2010. Missed out 2011 and you are back in the last game of September. And this man needs no introduction because he is the Fitzroy Flyer, the super coach. <laughs> <laughs> He's been uh, coaching for 14 years. He's made the finals campaign in nine of them, coached in four grand finals, including the replay. 21 finals uh, in total, and he's basically everyone's um, favourite in the media now. It's the security coach, Ross Lyon. How are you, Ross? Yeah, great to be here, and who knew, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you uh, were. Well, you used to be off your head going back 10 or 12 years. You were quite stern and intimidating, and you were in full Ross mode. Unhinged. Back in the day, but you've softened and uh, we've absolutely loved uh, you for it. But on Friday night, Ross, we have to start with the annual St Kilda catch up. Is it right? That, it's still uh, going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, rolled up Friday, one o'clock. I blinked, it was Monday morning, 9 a.m. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great bunch. So, the uh, really, roughly the 09 10 group, but really that period from um, 07 yep. through um, Robert Harvey, yep. Troy Swartz come along. You know, our physios, physios, our doctors from that time, probably, you know, 17 or 18 mm-hmm. of the group. There's, there's a couple um, overseas and whatnot, but it was a, it was a great day. Um, ironically, in the in the heartland of uh, Pendle's home, uh, Collingwood. Collingwood, Johnson Street, the Yarra Hotel, which is the original change rooms of the Collingwood Footy Club. So that, that was hard to swallow, but we did that. <laughs> but um, ended up back in St Kilda at the vineyard late. a little bit late at night. So, you know, we balanced it out beautifully. But look, as I look at Scott, I look yes. at him and I thought, he looks like a title fighter, like lean, dog hungry, yes. like, you know, yes. um, ready to go. So it's impressive. Absolutely it's impressive. ready to go. The man considers a mandarin a dessert, Ross. Now, uh, my, my, no, no, I wouldn't go that far. My desserts look a lot different. Uh, <laughs> you know that, <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Oh, that is the case. But you had a good catch up, and uh, you're such a tight, um, you're such a tight crew. Did you get Bakes there? Was Milne there? Who was, yeah, who yeah. was buzzing around? Who was the yeah, pest? Bakes was, Bakes was there. Milne was there. Milne yep. does a poem, or a poem, as uh, Milne would say. He um, does a poem every yeah, year. Yeah, we actually had one, Rui, because he wasn't there, um, he, he wrote one and sent it over and it was read out. So Milne felt it cut across his territory a bit. And, um, <laughs> and so he had a brief, brief poem. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty special day, really. It's been going on for, you know, X amount of years now. So yeah, Gardy was there, the big show. He was in fine form. And mm-hmm. um, our current the, footy director, Jason Blake. So I think he had his footy director's hat on for a bit of the day. So <laughs> It's one of the best nicknames in footy, the big show. The big show. And yeah. it's just yeah, awesome. I love that. I never really understood it, but uh, I was like, oh, the big show, where'd that come from? And they said, oh, like, when he goes, you know, socially. and So I got invited to his wedding. Mm. I left clear what is the big show. It's the best <laughs> wedding I've ever been to in my life. Like, him and the groom had their tops off and uh, picking up all the girls and dancing. It was fantastic. So, look, he's, he's full of energy and, and doing really well off field as well. Ah, brilliant, mate. We're going to pick your brains on uh, this grand final, which we can't wait for. Brisbane versus Collingwood at the mighty MCG. Going to be 100,000. They cannot wait for it, particularly the contrasting styles and the big decision Collingwood going to make on its forward line. Dan McStay out. Do they go small? There's heaps to chat about there. You've got great experience. But, Scotty, the six minutes and 18 seconds in the in the preliminary final, you ha- it was a cliffhanger. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff. You hang on, you hung on for dear life against GWS. I haven't seen suspenseful footy like it for a long time. What was it like being in the heart of it on it's a lot, Friday night? Also, yeah, I feel like it's a lot calmer for us because we're actually living it. So we're doing it. We're trying to execute things. Um yeah, and full credit to GWS. They threw some things out, and you could tell they were well versed in that scenario as well. Because um, you know, late in the game, two minutes, there was a few stoppages, and you could just see their halfbacks just spitting forward, asking the question of what are we going to do? And um, you know, we practiced it as well. But you had you know guys like Bobby Hill playing halfback, and mm. they asked a lot of questions of us. And um, yeah, we were lucky enough to get some repeat stoppages. I think around the three minute mark, we might have killed about 45 seconds as well with just some short passes and yeah. stoppage deep out on the half forward flank. And those seconds add up in the last 30 seconds when the siren goes and there's, you know, everyone's, oh, they've, they've hung on. Those few seconds, 
that we took from the three minute mark to the two minute mark. Mm. Well, you pretended massive... like you were going to kick long there for about 30 seconds and you were always going to your yeah, left yeah. Well, or your wall Nick, Nick was wide and yeah. I knew that he was there. But yeah, you could milk the game, mate. You could milk it. So I just pointed long and, <laughs> oh. just, and then waited and waited and then just started one to Nick. It was so, the biggest piss take I've ever seen. Like yeah. you've got to kick an 80 you got to take advantage goal. of the rules, mate. So yeah, we did that. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a cracking game. I thought structurally though, that last six minutes, you know, our rucks played a really important role of being behind the play too. So at any, obviously, they're going to go fast. They're going to go back through the middle, whatever it is. So from us, from a pressure point of view, is trying to keep them in a straight line, feed them back to where our ruckman's going to be. And, you know, Darcy Cameron took some excellent marks to mm, help right. us late in that game. And, yeah, and then we were lucky enough to hang on. And um, contrast from a year ago when you lose by a point and you're flying home to this year getting up by a point. So, yeah, it was great to be on the right side of the result. You caught the replay uh, Ross, I know you're probably busy Friday night. Have you had a look? How much do you admire? Yeah, there was it was completely deliberate and system systemated what they did. In the I last certainly month. watched um, a majority of the last quarter, particularly that last six minutes live. Mm. Um, and strategically, you, you knew what both sides were trying to do. So, in some senses, because there's no third up jumper at the ruck, mm. it's easier to keep it in tight. Mm. So, I thought the ruckman just dropping it at the feet. Um, it was incre- no, not incredible, but it was really disciplined mm. and, and not getting ahead and just whacking it out. And you could see everything Scott just said, that they're rolling and going forward and trying to get it out. And, you know, Tommy Mitchell and that, they, they were just great at just getting a hand on the ball without falling on it and keeping it in. And then just, uh, I'm not sure who hit Dacos laterally out of the congestion. Yeah, Jamie Elliott. That was yes. a big play. That was yeah. a really, because if he just gets in and surges it forward, it just opens the field up um, mm. and that, that killed it. But uh you could see just some of the composure, some of the, there was a couple of things Tom Green did, you know, trying to get out of the traffic and the congestion, but Collingwood's heat just kept coming at him. And mm. I was fascinated why I was so low scoring, you know, and then I look statistically, Collingwood had about 98 uncontested marks. Was, they are a go forward team, but I know they're more composed through attacking mid and they'll build it up if they're back on them. But um, that, that's probably the question, two really attacking teams, 57, 58. Mm. Um, and probably Collingwood's last two finals, um, we can allude to the challenge coming. Um, they, they haven't been scoring like they were. And, and Brisbane, um, even the last one was when it was a shootout, 100 to yeah. 124. Under so, the roof. Um, yeah, there's some challenges coming, but their discipline. Um, and I thought, you know, the law of averages it got, got Collingwood in last year's finals. Because like, you're playing in that many close ones, in the end, it's going to go your you way. Like- but this. You know, they, they kept their nerve. And um, to see, like, a Bobby Hill, I'm close to Brad Hill, we'll talk about it. We had dinner last night. We are talking about mm-hmm. Bobby and, and what Collingwood's done for him. So it's pretty pretty exciting for everyone involved. Coming off those cancer uh, battle, of course, you just admire him. He's had some big moments. He stood up, kicked three against um, Melbourne, of course, in the first final. Yep. Just extraordinary. Ross, what do you think they do? I'll get your thoughts too, Scott. But what do you think they do with McStay? So he's been so important for their structure did you, would you be tempted to go smaller with Ginevan or would you be trying to well, swing how or yeah. Frampton Well, who are the forward? potential replacements? Well, it's it's Ginevan to come in, they go smaller. Or how or um, Frampton come in, potentially provide that attack. Or you swing Will Hoskin Elliott forward. Yeah, well, he can play forward. I certainly wouldn't be shifting how. I think they went that experiment. Yep. And look, he can do it, but they just lost a bit of their team defense. He's incredible down back. Yeah. I love that stability behind the ball. They, in a they, they stood up and I think... They could go to it for maybe for a quarter, but I don't think he's a permanent forward. And mm. they they just lose – their absolute strength is their ability to roll around behind the ball and create the outnumber and then go. And mm. what Brisbane did last time when they're rolling around, like they use their wing and they roll around, mm. they shifted the ball off the line, mm. you know, to, to avoid the outnumber. So it's going to be a tactical battle. I don't know. I, does Frampton come in? Look, I love – the one – the one big moment in the last six minutes or whatever was mm. Cox's big contested mark. Yeah, he's on, on good. Taylor. That he's that was the good. game, right? Yep. Yeah, that was that was an incredible contested yeah. mark. So, if it, you know, he takes one or two of them in the game at the right time. He's worth it. So, mm. I'm not too sure. I, I think they're happy to go small and mobile. I I don't know him as intimate. McStay, well, they kicked two, didn't he? So mm. he is a big loss. Like, yeah, I don't he know, is super, he's super mobile, Dan, mm. an athlete, like six foot five, but he's an athlete, great runner, speed. That sort of stuff. So. What do you think they'll do? What do you think Fly will do? Do you know? I don't know. Obviously, don't know yet. It's, what do you we think Fly will do? Yeah. Um, well, sort of the advantage of the sub really now is we can go in like for like. We could make a like for like change. We could bring in like a Frampton and 
he could come in and potentially second ruck. Mm. And you play Coxie as a forward or Darcy Cameron as a forward or whatever. And then you can have a smaller on the bench. If you don't like the mix, you can just change it, yep. which is the sub gives you that flexibility to do. So, um, yeah, but it's a, we've got guys waiting in the wings. If you want to go s- smaller, we can bring Nobes in down back and release Will back forward. Um, and you've got Taylor to look at what they don't like. Maybe, maybe with Harris Andrews, maybe with if Payne comes, mm. they don't like the, the dangerous smalls. Mm. You know, so... Look, it's going to be dry. It's going to be 27. We'll get to that. But um, maybe it's, I don't know, is Johnson playing well? He, yeah, he's out. He's got a fractured wrist. Yeah, Reef McGuinness yeah. is mm-hmm. another one. Like he's, you know, six foot four, but super mobile um, and elite speed as well. So, yeah. yeah. That's there, where Henry options. was a loss at Collingwood, Henry. He used to sit in the triple M box. He, mm. He's a very talented player. They, Kick hard 40. to keep all your talent. Right yeah, yeah. You need them. Kick yeah. 40 goals in Geelong. Had an underrated season, I thought. Um, what about Jordan? I will sit in the triple M box, Ross. Uh, a year ago, and all of Geordie to go, his world was crumbling down around him. He'd had the Barley stuff, he'd come back, there was discussion about whether Collingwood should keep him, whether St Kilda should even be interested. It was a firestorm. And we was, I was sitting next to you, and we're doing Hitch a Caravan, favourite segment on a Sunday, <laughs> and, you, and you said, I'm hitching my caravan to Jordan to go in, right? And since then, he has grown not only on the field, but off the field, obviously. And I thought his performance on Friday night was as good a finals performance from a midfielder or right up there over the over the past few years. What are you seeing in this absolute raging bull at the moment? Well, I've seen it for a, a, a fair period now, right? So particularly in finals, yep. he just stands yeah. up. In in the 18 grand final, he, he stood up, didn't he? Like, yep. he's so powerful. Um, and he works the corridor beautifully. So I think when he sets his mind and he's striking at the ball, and I, that's the real issue they got. So... Cripps is a different kettle of fish. Big man around stop, he just cruises through. But, uh, you know, the, Dunkley would have been saying, I'll handle him here. I'll probably spread off him a little bit. But yeah. I, I'm not sure they could even, Dunkley's going to be able to handle to go. I'm, I'm not sure because it was McCluggage last time because he's got a bit more speed and power. Um, just because you take care of Geordie at a stop, it doesn't mean you take care of him. So yeah. um, I think it's a, it's a big week of consideration. But his speed, his power... Um, and his mindset, like he loves the big moments. That's what I see in him, you know. And what I, I loved hearing was Fly talking about if you watch his train, he trains so well. Mm, you know, he he does trains that. so well. So, you know, everyone thinks you just turn on game day, but clearly, and that's a great piece. He, he's written his own story, he's done the work. He's, um, you know, I think a lot of people jumped off him and, mm-hmm. you know, they, the pile on and trying to cancel him and all that. I just, I'm really pleased for the young man. And growing, Scotty, what are you seeing in him? Yeah, similar to what Ross just said, mm-hmm. like he's some of the finals games that he's had have just been yeah. ridiculous. I think because footy's simpler in finals, it's contest, it's get the ball forward, it's um, take your opportunity. Yeah, and he and he the way he plays is all about trying to win. He loves the big games. Round fifteen probably doesn't interest him too much. You know, <laughs> if there's something on the line, he's excited for it. But he's like, not a guy. He's not a guy that's motivated by individual stuff. Mm. Um, like he desperately wants to try and win a flag with this group. Yep. Um, but he's not interested in being an All Australian. If that makes, he doesn't care about trying to get his thirty and running behind the player to get a double up, so he gets his numbers. Mm. Which he he'll, exists. Yep. He'll have twenty and kick two most weeks. You know what I mean? And when finals rolls around, you look at all the guys that have the big numbers, and that finals come around, they it all disappears. Those little easy touches you've been trying to get all year. Like Geordie's game is built off finals football. It's just contest, hitting at the footy, work the corridor. Get forward, big contest, me versus you. Who wants it more? Mm. It's ninety five kilos. You just smack in and mm. oh, they're um, big men, aren't they? They're yeah, and he's ninety five kicks, mm. powerful. That's on, like five. Yeah, on the weekend he was just shoot. having the front row seat to just see him burst away time and time. You know, had fourteen clearances, mm. seventeen or eighteen contested balls. It's unbelievable. But it was all from the inside against what is a really good midfield that the Giants have as well. And he just was a class above everyone. Well, was he 17 contested possessions, I think. Yeah, yeah. But phenomenal. the strike just creates the chaos for the stoppage for the, yeah. the other little feeders to come in and pick up the yeah. crumbs. Yeah, he creates chaos. Yeah. There was a red Sharon in between Jordan the goey and I. Couldn't jump out of his way quick enough. Yeah. I'd I just be... sort of <laughs> yeah. wave him through. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what I would do. So it's a big week, isn't it, you guys? And you're talking before. It all seems to be handled really well at Collingwood. It's a that does seem to me, you guys know it a million times better, to see a contrast to Styles Ross. See Brisbane playing down the line. I see these guys taking the footy off the line and trying to go more quickly. How do you see the, the chess game? Yeah, I think you've summed up really simple. Brisbane have got really simple game plan. 
And, you know, I've said for a few weeks, they're the best team we played all year. We just didn't get near them twice. I think everyone else we played, we felt like at times we were in the game. Mm. Um, but McInerney is really important to him. And so Collingwood have got big rucks that can compete against him. Mm. He got hold of Rowan Marshall a few times. So they win it at the clearance. They find the mark. They compose themselves until they can go in long. And they just, they because they're so tall, they bring it to ground. They just press and lock it in. And they get repeats. Mm. That's their game. Mm. And then... From the centre back, they do control. They'll shift it off the line with marks, but they're, you know, off turnover, they'll they'll try and get through the corridor. Mm. But um, Coleman on, centre. yeah. So it's a simple game. So, mm. um, and then the pies are the opposite: <laughs> high hands, surge, go quick, um, and then so it's going to to me it's going to be a gain as it always is really, but one and lost in the midfield. So what the what um, the pies did incredibly well and I was concerned for them, and I wasn't sure, was the Giants were in red-hot midfield form, mm. and they they did what the previous two clubs hadn't been able to do. They dominated stoppage and, and won. And I thought anyone that beats Giants at stoppage would probably win because they'll be able to score and, and so on. So mm. they go in, it's going to be that battle. That That's the battle. So it's Scott and his boys in there. No pressure in the midfield. Where it's going to be won and lost. And I know, just looked... And I know I saw it light, but it just looked like Collingwood rolled up a few more numbers of stoppages than maybe they they normally would just to close that that part of their game off them. So um, yeah, it's contrasting styles. It, it really is. Mm. But uh, but if you, if you win the midfield battle yourself, you're going to score. You, yeah. you can score against Brisbane. That's so it, that that's my simple take. Scotty will know more. But and you changed the game on going back a bit on Friday night with that. With a bit more run, because you guys were playing, I would have thought you were playing a bit boring, be straight down the line, which isn't your one would on Friday night, but then you sort of tricked it up, sped it up a bit. Yeah. And that's when you got yeah, the well, game the, on your team. Yeah, well, fair? the options were there in the second quarter, but we just went really safe with the footy. And I, don't, I think sometimes guys think going safe is um, going to help the side. Let's protect the scoreboard and mm. we'll just go back down the line. But then very quickly, your game can get all out of shape and out of sync. And, mm. um, you know, we had options back through the middle that weren't really risky kicks. So it was probably more risky for us to play that down the line game mm. than it was to just move it off the line 15 metres to a free back who was running and then we can use the open side of the ground yeah. or whatever it may be. But yeah, so the second, uh, the third quarter was more about like when we take a mark, we're setting up really well. Let's let's explode into our offence. Let's get get the ball moving. Don't, mm. we're hatching the ball a lot. Guys are taking a good mark and then jogging back and then <laughs> hatch it. It was like under 10. Don't hatch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And, because all forwards want is the ball to get in there pretty quickly on a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And we're allowing the Giants to get all the way back mm. and then they will turn it over and then they can just springboard so quick. So we wanted to get get the ball in there before they had their numbers back, springboard. And yeah, a couple of times, Jamie Elliott got out the back off really good pressure. Bo McCreary kicked a good crumbing roll, um, you know, off Whitfield because Whitfield was up and then we get it in over the top of him, turn him around. And yeah, so we're just a bit boring in that second quarter and we addressed that pretty quickly. And our group, our group knows how to change the, the the tempo of a game, which is a strength of ours. So we just tried to implement that, and you know I think they keep the first goal of the third quarter, but we're still happy with the speed and the tempo of the game because they are, they are a good straight line defence. If you shift them, you can pull yeah. them apart. But Collingwood probably the danger for Collingwood they have a great down the line play and set up, so you might get success with one, and you go, well, that's working, and mm. you do it too much, right? So um, yeah, it's just the balance. The balance of it is. You don't want to be the side who's like, oh, we take all the risks. So mm. you, know, you take a mark at half back and you just blaze them through the middle blindly. Mm. Like you don't want to be dumb. Mm. At times we're going to have to take our medicine. They defend and that's finals. You're going to have to take that. But when it's on, let's use it and run. When it's not, let's play the down the line game. And um, yeah, that's just going to be the game. But we've also not going to be silly enough to think it's the offense side of it. We've got to defend these guys. They're mm. explosive, dynamic, offensive side. If we let them get their kick mark game going and build the ball up and Mm. It's going to be hard to get out. Charlie Cameron's going to take some stopping. I know that they are. We talk about their tools a lot, Danaher and Hipwood, but they are as good at ground level. You, is that they're probably the best bunch of small forwards in the competition? Yeah, they're they? really dangerous. And um, but and, uh, you know, Sard went to Cameron, so you lo then you lose Sard's bounce. Mm. So I don't know. They got a couple that can handle. Quainer just springs to mind. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah. up get physical. Probably plays a little bit higher, does he? I, I don't know, but. Yeah. Uh, you just got to bring your own game. It's going to be one in the contest. I think Carlton showed if you win the contest and you get it in, they look human pretty quick as well. So, But 
I just thought Brisbane a few stepped up for them at critical times. Like Quainer mm. imposed himself physically around centre bounces and off the line there mm. for about 15 minutes. They, they've got a few more that can bob up. And as you said, when it was all going around them, Coleman had the, he's the one just the laser oh, shifting it off like the line. surgeon off the back there, a couple of kicks. Great line from Sammy Landsberg in the Herald Sun said he found the middle more than Brian Lara. I love that. <laughs> it's not bad from uh, Sammy. We're going to wrap this up. We'll ask you one more. I'll get your tip. Um, yeah. How proud are you, Lockie Neal? He's a former charge. I know you still um, you keep in touch with him as you do with all your all your um, fellas. You get a chance to play a very significant role in a potential premiership win. I know he's on the opposite side. Yeah, of very here. special. Uh, again, someone who did the work, mm. um, and the, the athletic side of the game is harder for him, right? But he's yeah. he's supposed to terrorise him when he's run, and he'd gut run like he'd dig in. And probably the biggest regret of the grand final is he was sub when he we we. We had the boar out and him in and, you know, I remember Peter Coleman said, you know, go to your values. Um, he was head of Woodside when yep. you're stuck, go to your values. And Lockie had sort of, not much, but, you know, there was a bit pre-season. Matty bought the boar and his leadership group. So we, we went with Matty, which is okay, but, you know, it was probably in hindsight. Thought you'd have that decision. So mm. he goes out as a, you know, like a diesel of the team. Like he's a big key pin and – uh he is so clean. Mm. He is so clean. Um, it, it's going to be great to see greatness versus greatness. That, that's what I love about it when you get to the pinnacle. Like when you're performing, you're doing it. You're not doing it against mugs, right? You're doing it mm. against the best. Going to be staring at you playing that sweeper role at the back of the stoppage, which you've done uh, so well. Scotty, what was your famous line to Lockie Ross back in the day? He said, if you don't lift, you're going to be what? Oh, yeah. A okay. little fat forward pocket <laughs> playing in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Who do you think wins, Ross? Forget the fact that Scott's right here. How do you think, Scott, what's going to be the pivotal factor in getting one of these two? I've been on the Lions us. for a while. Yep. I just think their game's in great order. Yep. Um, they've beaten the Pies twice in two different ways. And I... We prepared for Collingwood watching Brisbane, how they just shifted it off the line because mm. Collingwood loves straight line ball movement. Yep. So if they can shift it and they win clearance, um, the game's in really good order. And I, for whatever reason, Collingwood's game, the offensive game, the last two finals has Dropped been, off, in it? Yeah, but yeah. then I had a good look last night. I went through. They actually were scoring pretty well until, until the finals. So uh, there's no doubt they're a group that can flick it. But at the minute... Yeah, you know, they won and done first quarters and a burst here and there. Mm. I think that's the question I've got on the pies. For whatever reason, it's hard to explain it. They'll know the reasons why, but the numbers tell me Brisbane's got their game in better order than the pies. How much are you looking forward to it, Scotty? I think, what is his game? 330. I think you joined Robert Harvey, actually. Yeah, 383. 383. Oh. 383, yeah. so equal with Banger, who's six all time. Yeah, behind someone told me that yesterday. Fletcher, KB, Sean Burgoyne, Tuck, and Harvey. So, mate, yeah. You, we, oh, yeah, really cool to join Banger. He's been a massive mentor of mine, probably mm. the biggest mentor I've had in footy with my development and my career. Um, and yeah, in terms of the week, I'm just excited to be back on this stage, be back in the arena, and um, I'll be ready on Saturday, but I'm just going to enjoy the week and yeah. make sure my prep's my prep. and. When I get out there, you know, leave nothing to chance and give it everything I've got. And you've got a contract for next year, so I don't want to be insulting him. I, don't know, I got asked that heaps yesterday. They're like, if you win, are you going to retire? Yeah. No, he's in, no. in the moment guy, mate. Leave it alone. Yeah, no, I just was like straight away. I was like, no. In, the, ba in the back of his head, he's thinking, you know what's going to be great? three more seasons in me, When the bastards. ball bounces and there's chaos everywhere, yes. we're just going to see the cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> not fumbling, <laughs> stepping up. Yeah, you know, there's Scotty Pendlebury. Like, 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 greatness. <laughs> Sell the candy. Hang it out. Yeah. <laughs> they hang it out in their right hand, Scott. They've been, the opposition's been watching you do this for how many years? 17 years? You hang 17. it out in your right hand first. And where does the head go? And they, and they <laughs> all. The hips go left. And they all fall for it. You cut back. It's a basketball and then a little mate. step forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. This has been fantastic. I have really enjoyed it. Scotty, I'll see you in the rooms on Saturday afternoon. Hopefully it's with a big smile on your face, mate. For your sake, have an absolutely uh, ripping day and um, good luck out there. Thanks. Appreciate it. Ross, enjoy. Good luck, Scotty. Thanks, mate. Enjoyed your company as always, mate. It is it is always fun. We enjoy the cuddly Ross. And, um, Privilege to be invited. Very, uh, I don't do podcasts, but for you two, no problem. You're a champion. Good luck for you and your Saints, not only in the trade period, but in 2024. They are on the rise. Thanks so much for everyone joining us on the Jock and Journo Show. It has been a special episode. We will see you next week. Next week. See you then. Cheers.